In previous videos we have looked at creating actions in the input system asset, scripting for the input system, adding mobile controls for character movement and using the input system with the UI toolkit for navigating menus. In this video we are going to look at in-game input rebinding which allows players to select their own input controls during gameplay, then save the new inputs to player prefs so they are permanently stored. I have created a new blank project in Unity 6. Go to Window and open the Package Manager. Ensure that Input System is installed from the Unity Registry and using at least version 1.9 or above. In this series I am using version 1.11. If you want to follow along with this project, install Machine version 3 and you can find the asset pack to install from the video description below. If you have already downloaded the asset pack from a previous video, reopen your project to follow along with this video. Open the rebinding scene. There is a rebinding menu UI toolkit document already set up. Open the source asset to take a look inside. It has a label to display a message and a button to perform the rebind. We need to switch the rebind menu on and off during gameplay. Go to the scenes folder and action maps and open the input system actions mobile. Add a new action called menu. From the first binding listen for start on the gamepad. Add a new binding and listen for tab on the keyboard. Save the asset. When working with any input system actions asset for your scenes, you can assign it as project wide input actions. This will make it easy to manage inputs in one centralized place. Although this example is simple, imagine the benefits for a much bigger and more complex project where you need your control schemes to be consistent. The character has a pre-made player walk script attached, which is located in the art folder and script folder. In the player walk script, add the new input action variable for the menu action. Add a public game object variable to store the menu object. In the await method, find the action of menu and pass it into the menu input variable. In the update method, check if menu action was pressed this frame. If so, run a function called menu. Create the menu function and check if the menu object is active in hierarchy, meaning if it is switched on in the game. If so, switch the menu object off, else switch the menu object on. Drag the rebinding menu into the menu object slot of the player walk script. Also add the mobile controls. Create a new script called rebind script. Ensure it is using the input system and UI elements namespaces. Add a public input action asset variable. Create a private input action rebinding extensions dot rebinding operation variable. Create a private input action for the action you want to change. In this case, the jump action. Create two private variables for the rebind button and rebind labels in the UI document. Create an awake method. First, find the jump action. Then get the UI document root visual element. Do a root query to find the rebind button and rebind label. Create an on enable method. Focus on the rebind button so you can click on it with a gamepad controller. Then check when the rebind button is clicked using a lambda run a rebind function. Create an on disable method to unsubscribe the rebind button using the minus equals. Create the rebind function. First, when rebinding, you must disable the action map that contains the action you want to rebind. Set the text on the rebind label to choose a new button. Gray out the rebind button so you can't click it again while rebinding. Using the rebinding operation for the jump action, perform interactive rebinding dot uncomplete. In brackets, when the operation is complete, use a lambda to run a function called rebind completed. Start the rebinding operation. Create the rebind completed function. Dispose of the rebinding operation. We can also display the new input. Create a temporary string variable called new binding. Make it equal to jump action binding zero dot effective path. Set the rebind label text to rebind completed and new binding to display the new binding input. Re enable the action map that contains the action you want to rebind to. Now to save the rebind to the player prefs, create a temporary variable called rebinds that is equal to input actions dot save binding overrides as JSON. Then accessing the player prefs, set a string called rebinds and save the rebinds data. 
In the player walk script, we need to retrieve the rebinds data. In the await method, create a temporary variable called rebinds that is equal to player prefs get string of rebinds. Check if string is not empty for rebinds. Load the data using input actions dot load binding overrides from JSON using the rebinds data. Add the rebind script to the rebinding menu and drag the input system actions mobile asset into the input action slot. During play mode, the player jumps with space. Press tab or start on gamepad. Click the rebind button and choose a new input. Rebinding is complete. Press the tab key again or start on gamepad to switch off the menu. Now the new input controls the player. Even when you come out of play mode and go back in, the new input will still be used for the jump as the input has been saved to player prefs and is set each time you enter play mode. And that brings us to the end of this video. We have looked at how to create the rebinding script to allow players to choose their own input controls during gameplay. You can design your own UI menus for multiple control rebinds. In the next video we will look at local multiplayer games where two or more players are using the same computer and screen but using different controllers. We will look in detail at the player input component. See the input system documentation to find out more. The link can be found in the video description below. Thanks for watching.